So uh, we'll get there. It's just it's right at the top of the hour. I see a couple other people still joining in, so we'll give everybody another minute minute or so, and then we'll walk through. And then um, Stacy, I'll I'll start with these opening slides and then flip over to yours. So again, for those that that are on, we appreciate uh, appreciate your time today. Um, the the topic today is applications. It's all around applications. We think uh, uh, just with the the power of the uh, EFI uh, solutions, there's just a whole lot more applications that you can produce in the market. Not only not only from a uh, can they be produced, but can they be produced effectively and efficiently? And that's what we'll talk a lot about that uh, uh, today. Is that not just yeah? You know, again, can we print it? Can it can it actually uh, come come off the printer? But you know, can you do it with less less time on press or less uh, operator intervention or things along those lines to make sure that these applications not only are wow the customer, which is, you know, number one goal, but also something that, uh, you know, allows your business to be more profitable along the way. Uh, selling, selling things at a higher, at a higher uh, cost per square, you know, or higher, higher mark, you know, uh, price per square, but doing it with less cost per square uh, at the end of the day is, is really what uh, we want to focus on. And customers today, as you guys know, are very, um, they're very creative and, and our customers that use our equipment also are equally creative and coming up with new solutions or new ways of doing things. Um, and, and we'll walk through a couple examples of that uh, as we go through today. So uh, as I mentioned, use our, use our chat window today uh, to ask any questions, either chat or Q and A. Uh, they're in the lower right hand corner. We do have everybody on mute just from uh, uh, the volume perspective, but we will, we'll walk through and, um, uh, again, uh, take a, uh, pay attention to any questions that are being asked. So, um, let me stop this. Actually, I want to stop this presentation. I want to switch over, Stacy. I'm going to switch over to your slides, and I want to introduce. Uh, we're going to have a couple of folks go go through um, uh, some topics today. We're only going to use do slides for the first couple minutes to walk through that. We'll have Stacy Keenan, who's one of our uh, premier application. Uh, <laughs> Um, it, you know, extraordinary, uh, and, and spend a lot of time talking about the types of applications that were out there, and then we'll, we'll actually spend some time on the on the press and and actually show some of these applications being built uh, as we walk through. So, with that, Stacy, let me get this in slide mode. And you see my slides, Stacy? Yes, it's perfect. Perfect. All right, I'll let you uh, let you take it from here. Um, tell me when you want to move on. Um, if you'd like to hit the next slide, I will roll into my presentation. Hi, Perfect. everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Stacy Keenan. Uh, what I do at EFI is I came in as a graphic designer years ago, and I started as a printer operator. So I learned along the way how to merge uh, my design skills with the technology and the printer capabilities. So my role today is uh, I help source cool and unique materials uh, for us that we can try to print on. I help customers with pre-press and, and learn how to build uh, these amazing files uh, for customers um, and give presentations uh, like we're going to do today where I can talk about uh, all the fun stuff, which are all of the creative applications that we can do on our EFI equipment. So historically, we've tried uh, quite a lot of interesting things over the years. We've tried printing on doors. Uh, we've tried printing on hats, um, tchotchke things. Um, basically, the general rule is if we can fit it safely under the print heads, we will uh, try it. Uh, but what you're seeing on the slide now is a list of, of actual proven applications that many of our customers are into today. Um, the most obvious is display graphics. Um, when I first started, uh, you know, doing large format graphics was primarily what uh, we focused on. But over the last uh, 16 years that I've been with EFI, um, the markets have shifted. Uh, we do a lot of, um, we do markets now like uh, corrugated uh, high speed printing. We get into um, a lot of architectural applications. Um, so corrugated uh, packaging for us is, is an exciting new market that we have um, a few platforms uh, that we uh, are getting into. We have a high speed Nozomi press. We will have um, 
a display graphics side uh, corrugated packaging platform. Um, textile, which um, by the way, uh, there are a lot of uh, UV options for textile. So I like to emphasize that textile is not just dye sub, which we do have an amazing uh, Reggiani platform uh, that covers um, many textile needs. But uh, as a UV user, uh, there are a lot of textile um, applications and materials that you can use. So um, if you're not doing textile and you have a UV uh, platform, um, don't rule it out. Um, so textile also covers uh, commercial fabrics and fashion. Um, you'll see I have a couple examples of some shirts that were uh, dye subbed. Um, these are things that are actually for sale out in the public. Uh, wood decoration is a new uh, market for us also with the cubic machine. We can do digital staining. We can also print on wood in any of our uh, UV platforms, our wide format uh, printers that you'll see uh, demonstrated today. Ceramic tiles, uh, we have a, a complete commercial solution now to printing ceramic tiles. We also have a complete solution for thermoforming and an ink set that is compatible uh, with the stretch that is needed to uh, produce these kind of graphics. Um, we architectural decoration, as I mentioned, is, is a huge market that we've seen expand uh, quite a lot. Um, the most obvious um, things that have been around for a while are things like window films, wall coverings, but we've printed on wall panels, uh, acoustic panels, um, Descor makes a uh, fabric that is used for acoustic purposes. Um, so there are a lot of um, applications in the architectural marketplace that are printable. Truck curtains are another um, new application that we uh, have a lot of uh, ingenuity for because we have a skip white feature so that it, um, it allows the printer to skip over any blank areas and quickly print a large graphic such as a, a truck curtain. And that's a very popular application right now in Europe. We also have a uh, new blue back and paper based applications. Uh, we have a printer that it's gonna be dedicated just to those applications. So things like paper billboards, paper signage, bus shelters, um, anything that requires a temporary paper based application. Uh, we also have a platform for luxury vinyl tile and laminated flooring. So this is another exciting market that um, when I first started was prohibitive, but now we have an ink set and the capabilities to uh, get into this marketplace commercially. Uh, one interesting um, substrate that uh, people in Europe are printing on in high fashion are leather decorations such as shoes and handbags, furniture. Um, again, this, there's a uh, coding requirement for this application, but we also have a full line of, of uh, coatings that allow us to get into marketplaces such as healthcare, uh, where rigorous cleaning of a graphic is required. Um, we even uh, do the inside of airplanes, if you've even seen the sides, the insides of an airplane with the printed pattern, we have that capability. Uh, we have customers who are getting into furniture um, not only prototyping, but doing faux wood grains with a textured print, which is uh, one of the applications that I uh, have information on how to do. Um, so when you feel the wood, uh, it actually has a, a tactile uh, feel to it. Uh, promotional items uh, that require big printing is another popular um, market that our customers get into. And uh, textured and tactile printing, which is uh, creating any type of texture, whether it be a faux wood grain, uh, it could be an embossed um, appearance, and the use of clear um, allows you to highlight uh, some of those, uh, the height of the wood, so it makes it a very realistic pattern. So these are just some of the applications that we uh, have an established um, procedures and equipment and ink sets uh, to do. And it's yeah. not to say that uh, this is all inclusive. This is a, a pretty large list of some of the markets that we're getting into now. But th I think that was a key part, Stacy. What you just talked about is we we have the formula for these things. We, we've done these before. I had or worked with customers that have done these before. So so even if it's if you come across something that's new to you, it's probably not new to us, and we can help with that kind of 
what's the best way to go about it? Like what's the best uh, approach? What's the best ink set? What's the best, uh, you know, printer? What's the best setting on the printer? Like the whole, the whole formula, you know, what substrates make sense? What substrates make sense for these applications that are better than others? Uh, all of those things. So as you're walking through your decisions on you know, applications, that's something that, that we can definitely, we have that experience and, and, um, and have seen it, right? And your, your team has seen it, Stacey, and then Tiffany, obviously the, the customer experience centers has uh, proven a lot of these things that are out there. So, uh, and, and really it's, it's beyond, well beyond the traditional signage, right? That comes in because inkjet sticks to anything, the, app, the substrates are, are, are wide and varied. Um, all of these things make sense. So not to step on your, your slides there, Stacey, but it's, uh, I always get excited when I see this big list, but it could, it, but it could be daunting, right? So that's the, the part I want to say is that it's not, uh, again, if your customers are coming in and, and really what we see it with a lot of customers, especially the ones that get the EFI equipment that, you know, maybe they're, that's the first time they have white ink and on a piece of uh, equipment they have, and they bought it for a certain application for a certain customer, but then their operators and their, uh, get, get more, um, experience with, or just, you start to grow that application set just because of the capabilities of the printer. And I think that's what we're going to talk through a little bit uh, as well. And a lot of the hybrid printers that we offer are capable of doing a lot of these things yeah. um, all, all on their own, even if it's not a dedicated process or, or a dedicated market. So you could have a customer uh, walk in that, uh, you know, want something printed in a wood grain or they want a door decorated or somebody wants a, a vinyl banner. You can easily switch materials and be off and running on, you know, lots, so many of these different applications. Um, so that's, to me, the exciting part of, of being at EFI for 16 years is um, just the versatility and the speed in which we, we can shift gears and, and use our equipment for so many different applications and, and uses. Yep. Uh, so the two that we're going to show today, uh, we're going to show uh, white and clear printing. So even though this isn't maybe a new industry type thing, how we use white and clear um, is it can be used very creatively and that's where I come in as a designer. Um, so when our when our print goes down on a clear material with no white or clear, it's frosted. So for instance, we have uh, window graphics all over our building um, and meeting rooms that we designed so that they have some of them are frosted so that you can't see into the meeting room. So if you know how the inks lay down and how to leverage the white and clear, you can do a lot of different things um, for applications. Um, the clear will make our inks translucent. So on some of our conference room doors, we've used some clear ink to make the, uh, the tint translucent so you can see in and tell if there's somebody in the conference room or not. We also have clear ink capabilities now that um, are a protective coating for our graphics. So if you're doing a truck side graphic and you need to protect that print, we have a platform that uh, the clear ink is also a protective coating now. And white ink obviously is for opacity. So if you use it on a silver material, um, like a lot of our customers will print on a silver wall covering and use white ink to block out the areas that you don't want to be metallic. So even though we don't have a metallic ink set, we have so many materials available for so many different markets that have metallic finishes or exciting gold, silvers, textures. Um, so white ink, uh, the use of white underneath the printing allows that material to come through as little or as much as you want. And the second application that we're going to do today that Tiffany and Bruce are going to demonstrate is our five layer blockout. And the next slide shows how this is um, accomplished. Now, this is, is something that um, in this example does not require pre press. So the nice thing is a lot of our software capabilities on the printer can do print modes that uh, do not require the intervention of um, pre press or a pre press operator. It's a seamless, it, the, the white uh, layer and the black layer will print pixel per pixel to the image that you select. So the, the printer will set this up and Bruce will demonstrate this. Um, it will set up a, a right reading file. It will print a flood of white, a flood of black, a flood of white again, and then it, it will mirror the image and print it on the other side. Now what this application is good for is, is 
right reading graphics that are visible from both sides of glass or an area where you have two sides uh, visible to uh, the viewer. So again, this is a, a great capability of our of our software because um, you can take any image and create this right on the printer, which is exciting. And it also eliminates um, having to stock. You used to have to stock special blockout material specifically for this, so the light doesn't come through. And now uh, we can do it right on the printer. Um, so it's it's really um, a great addition to the printer software. Yeah, I think I think that's that's really is the key is that not only can it be done, right? It can be done efficiently and effectively um, at uh, um, right at the printer itself. So I don't have to do a lot of extra steps or extra work. The operator, single operator that's running it, can handle all of this themselves. I don't need a whole another department to to do certain things. Uh, like this, which is, uh, which is, you know, key today, you know, doing more with less, less people, uh, and then just taking advantage of the software on the printer, as well as the printer print capabilities. So. And the, the material range also is a benefit because you can print this on uh, an acrylic or a plexi you, or you, a PETG. You can print it on a window film, a window cling, um, you know, so that it gives you much more versatility. Uh, as far as the base material that you want to print on uh, to be able to have a right reading graphic on both sides of, of say, glass, a glass application. So it, it really is a, a great benefit to the um, software of the printer and, and saves time, saves on not having to sandwich two graphics together and, and the labor that used to have to go into making these types of graphics. Perfect. I think we're, I think we're going to see some of this now, right? Is that... Uh... That's what we're going to do. So, so uh, again, we wanted to show a couple examples. So, there's a ton of applications that are possible, and you know, we could spend hours, you know, going through each of these. We, we wanted to pick two that we think are interesting and and show some capabilities on on the the current uh, uh, two printers that we have in in the uh, um, stop sharing in in the demo center. So, I'm going to switch this over now and get. Um, Manchester Customer Experience Center. So if you guys haven't been there, you should. Uh, if you haven't met Tiffany and Bruce, you will. Uh, and uh, we'll walk through a little bit of the uh, the application now. So uh, you guys should be front and center. Tiffany, are you on? I can't hear you if you're talking. I, I am. Um, okay. Can you move me to the stage and lock it in? Yep, I got it. Yeah. And the video is focused on the conference room windows that I mentioned, so you can see a little bit of that translucency in the blue door. So again, it, the right. so that's of clear is, um, you know, is a creative benefit. Yeah, so that's, and that's why I wanted to start here, um, because it ticks a few of the boxes that Stacy mentioned. Um, so for those of you um, I have not worked with yet, hi, good morning, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Tiffany Bisson, I'm the manager of the uh, US-based Customer Experience Center at our innovation, um, uh, innovation Center for the US. Um, I am joined by Bruce Bain, uh, he'll be running the printers for us today um, as, we as we work through those two applications that Stacy highlighted. But I wanted to start here for a couple of reasons. The wallpaper behind us printed on EFI equipment. The Lintec on the window film here, uh, Lintec is an optically clear um, adhesive film that you would apply to a window. We printed second surface. In this area here, you can see that the, the door is completely translucent, so you can see through it. Um, so the, uh, the uh, clear ink acts like um, a, a, a fill for the void between the jetted drops. So it allows you to see completely through that. So you put that clear on a color, and now that Lintec applied to the glass appears like stained glass. Now here, you can see we have some frosted areas and some privacy areas. We wanted to make sure that, um, you know, if, if you have a, you know, say in your HR building or, um, you know, an area where you do need some privacy, if you print just our standard ink to that clear material, it is going to act frosted, but you can see in certain areas, we did put some spot clear so you can peek in and you can kind of see who's in there if you needed to. Now, you can imagine if you were printing this in long runs, we have void space at the bottom. 
that would then butt up with void space that we have at the top. And some of our uh, legacy equipment and some of the competitive equipment out there, the carriage would travel over all of that void space, even though there was no information there. Um, as an operator, painful to watch. Um, so on our new equipment, um, and, you know, on the roll to roll and on some of our newer hybrids, we have skip empty pixel, which Stacy touched upon as well. Um, so basically what that means is that the carriage and the printer realizes that there's no print information in those areas and will advance the material at a much faster rate of speed, regardless of which print mode you're using. And then the carriage would begin printing in the area where it sees that next line of print. So really, really efficient. And again, all on one wall, the wallpaper, the clear, the layering, the whiting, the frosted application. Um, I'm going to switch over to um, the Q5R that we have on the floor uh, here at the demo center, where Bruce is staged to run um, three rolls up, three different materials, and different images utilizing color, white, and clear. I'll go ahead and switch over to Bruce right now. Thank you, Tiffany. So without any further ado, I will go ahead and start this print, and then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Utech Q series. Uh, so as Tiffany mentioned, I am running three different rolls of wallpaper. Uh, we have a, a silver, a flash, and then a silver that has a little bit more of a texture. Uh, that one is here in the center. Uh, we are going to be slitting and cutting all three rolls. Uh, so you will see that uh, as the sheets uh, or as the rolls come through, uh, once they complete, uh, they will be uh, cut along the X axis. And on the center roll here, you will see we're also slitting along the uh, Y axis. Uh, so you will get perfectly uh, trimmed uh, finished sheets. Uh, it's one of the nice features of the uh, the, the roll to rolls that we have. Uh, you can take the roll and uh, completely sheet them. And to uh, to Dan's point, you know, everybody knows you guys probably know better than us. Um, but the 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 real struggle um, with uh, getting help, you know, operators, getting people to come. And, and run the printers, um, supply chain issues, um, all of that is very, very real. And what this uh, platform and this application and capability of the printer allows for is one operator running three different jobs, potentially. You're in line slitting and cutting, so you're removing that process of taking the printed pieces off, taking them to a cutter, which is a secondary process. And then as Stacy mentioned, um, and as you'll be seeing here shortly, the Q series has the inline clear, which is not just a pretty clear, it's not just aesthetic, but it also um, is now a durable clear. So it has um, uh, abrasion resistance, it has UV protection. So now, in some cases, you can now bypass the process of having to laminate as well, which is a secondary process. It's another material that you need to stock and source. So this really, when you're talking about efficiency and utilization of one product to complete multiple tasks, this really is the Ferrari in the workspace. And again, inline slitting and cutting, as you can see. And the, uh, the clear that Tiffany mentioned, um, it is one clear that is put into the printer, but it can be either a matte finish or a gloss. Uh, that's not two separate uh, clears, it is one clear. Uh, it's going to change the look based on uh, the segmentation of the lamps. That's all done in the software. Uh, not anything an operator has to, um, you know, get anything too technical about. You're just going to change the setting from uh, matte clear to gloss clear. Uh, the software will, will do the rest as far as, uh, you know, using the lamps to uh, to get the look. And it can also be used as a shape clear, which is what you're going to see here, where we have gone in and selected specific areas of the artwork that we want to have that sheen. Uh, much like the window film that you saw. So we're controlling where that clear goes. So we can have some frosted um, inline as well as some gloss, um, or it can be used as a flood coat. Um, so the entire image area can be um, covered with that clear either for protection or if you're looking for just that increase in sheen. And that is really where the creative side comes in and where you can offer amazing graphics to high end clients that are into fashion or retail. You can buy a material as we see here that is glossy and put a matte finish varnish um, or do the reverse have a matte um, matte textured uh, substrate and then use the clear as an accent. So 
when you, when you get into these this type of printing, um, it really appeals to the high end markets um, in POP. Yeah, and this is kind of similar to what you know Stacy's talking about here. This uh, material is a uh, you know a metallic uh, material, uh, so the water and the sky, it's just going to be one hit of the CMYK underneath the sand in the bottle and the text, we have white ink. And then on top of the bottle, we have the uh, clear gloss. Uh, so you get a really good, you know, cool effect with the bottle. Uh, you get a cool metallic background, um, you know, the material showing through in the CMYK. And then where you want the sand, uh, again, it's just gonna look you know, like sand with that white ink. And Stacy, we have available, um, you know, if anybody online has any questions on how that is set up, say in Photoshop or Illustrator, we do have some documentation or white papers on how that happens in prepress as well. And there was a question about uh, best equipment for printing on blueback and paper that came up uh, on uh, online. Uh, so that's going to be a, a a volume uh, throughput need as well as um, you know price point. So you can use our standard inkjet inks um, on paper uh, as with no issue. Um, we do have one press specifically designed for that blueback application, utilizing um, the Reggiani uh, printer with the sticky belt application, um, and that is a, a different ink set that tends to behave better specifically for the blueback. Um, Paste, uh, pasting application. So if you're going to be doing the bus shelters or the, um, you know, high volume, but low install time, um, uh, blueback application that we're seeing a lot in Canada and Europe, that would be the, um, Reggiani Vogue printer utilizing a, a very specific ink set. I think that's a common, um, thing when somebody says, what, what's the best printer for this type of application? So obviously our print, a lot of our printers can do a lot of different applications. It does come down to volume and, you know, how, how efficiently, how, how often they do it, what percentage of their work is that way? Is it a one-off or is it a, is it a um, core component of the business? Uh, that, that will determine the printer. Those are the things that determine the actual printer, but the capabilities, really many of the printers can handle those. And, you know, there's one is, can you print another one came up is, can you print the clear onto fabrics? So if you're, if you're putting uh, some kind of fabric through here, can you also print clear on that fabric? So the technical answer is yes, of course. Um, but by default, um, if you're printing, say to a Samba or something like that, um, the material itself has peaks and valleys. Um, so that would still, uh, appear um, a bit more matte than say if you're printing on something smooth like this and you'll even see a little bit of that um, uh, when we when this print comes through um, on the the material in the middle it has a texture so it's going to be a different sheen i'm going to stop real quick this is cutting so right now you saw the printer paused and then the, there is a blade behind that platen there um, and it's going to sheet those those prints off and then it's going to continue printing so it'll do that at the lead edge and the tail edge of all of the prints that we have in queue Again, benefit here is you can go from a five meter roll to finished sheet sizes. You can apply as many slitters across that five meter width um, or the three meter width if you're looking at the Q3. Um, so you can apply as many slitters as you need to. So you can go from, again, full three meter or full five meter rolls down to finished pieces. And once this and this in the, the roll in the center, you can see we're slitting as well. So it's finished goods coming out of the front of the printer in one uh, one step, right? Um, so again, the efficiencies and, uh, you know, touching it as, as uh, little as possible, um, as little human intervention uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. And another question came in is, is the clear ink only one formulation, uh, but is made matte or uh, gloss depending on the settings or is it, uh, is there different? Um... Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So you'll, you'll have one, uh, one skew that you need to maintain in stock. <clears throat> and then depending on how you, uh, segment the lamps, you can control that gloss level. So it can be as shiny or as matte as you like. Now, our inks by default do all have a bit of a sheen. Um, you can use that, that matting feature of the clear ink to make our, our say, satin ink uh, by default more of a, a matte finish. Now, yeah, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So you can see this up close. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. No, as I said, that's just another benefit. Is one you're only maintaining one clear, but you can have a variety, variety of different kind of finish options, if, uh, if you will, with that. So. Correct. 
that you can see here on this side, we're utilizing white and clear on the gold flash. This is a Dreamscapes gold flash. Um, base material color is here. And then we have our standard CMYK here where you see the bit of um, the frosted. This is clear on top of the frosted, which you can see completely changes the color. This red here with and without clear, completely different effects. And then over here, we have white ink underneath blocking out the uh, sheen of the material and then clear on top. And then again, just clear on top of standard CMYK. But the real thing to note is how much it changes your color. So you can really add pop. You can really um, you know, exasperate what color you're laying down um, by adding that clear ink. Now, as I mentioned, if we move over to the roll in the center, you can see here, we're slitting the edges. So you're going, uh, instead of having a margin like we had on the gold, you're printing and cutting. So you have that edge to edge uh, print capability. But you can see the sheen of the, the clear on the um, textured material is a little bit different than what you saw on, on the matte material or on the smooth material. But again, utilizing that clear for different pop, adding different aesthetics features, um, it really changes the look and feel of the finished piece. Of course, that's how you're gonna be able to sell it for a, a, a higher print price, right? And then again, over here, this one here is on the silver flash. Again, same file, same capabilities, um, just really exasperating the fact that we have three different materials on here. Um, you know, so you can have, you know, as one operator, if you have multiple jobs, um, as long as the materials are of similar thickness, you can really, um, you know, add efficiencies to your workflow by being able to run multiple jobs. Now we'll watch it uh, cut this one last time and then we'll switch over and we'll uh, evaluate the block out five layer uh, inline printing on the 30H. And one question came in is that we talked about the uh, clear coat as a, as a uh, um, uh, on the whole print. Is there a warranty on out or UV outdoor on the, on the clear coat? Yes, there is. Um, so yeah. right now we're still uh, we're still working with um, some uh, warranty uh, details, but we're seeing out of the gates an addition of upwards of three years. So again, the the goal is to extend that um, so that we can be a true replacement for uh, laminate. Um, but at the moment, it's adding three years. Now, another really cool application that I want to point out, you can see in front of the printer, uh, this wood grain. So this is also a printed flooring material. So the top of the material has the wood texture. And then what we did is we printed to the back side of it. We printed uh, color first and then white over. And then the, the material is protecting the ink. So uh, your wear layer um, is, is perfect. You can see there going from roll to finished sheet sizes and the printer just picks right up and starts printing right away. We do have different catch mechanisms for the front that are available as well. So you can go to the printer to a conveyor to a collection, uh, a sheet collector, or uh, you can just have your own catch basin in the front. And that, that finishing options, inline finishing options is, is a key piece to helping add the profitability uh, of applications right now. Again, not only can I print them and do the, the, the effects well, but can I, can I do it with you know, the least number of operators? Can I do it uh, as efficiently as possible across the board? So really when it comes to applications to make you money, that's both sides of that. Can I, can I actually produce it? And then how effectively can I produce it? And you'll see different options on different printers uh, as we go. Exactly. So now we're going to switch over to the EFI Pro 30H. This is the latest hybrid introduction to our portfolio. Um, it is incredibly, insanely popular. Um, again, just commercially released, um, but dozens of orders already um, just because it's at a really critical um, price point while giving you really, really good throughput as well as a whole breadth of new applications um, that was needed for a long time uh, in this space. So this is gonna be our entry level 
um, production unit. Uh, it's a hybrid. So uh, unlike the Q series that you just saw, that's strictly roll to roll. This is going to be roll or rigid applications. We leveraged a lot of technology from our super high speed platform on this entry level platform to give our entry level customers a bit of an edge at a really competitive price point. So over here, we're going to be utilizing magnetic linear drive um, as well as five layer uh, blockout capability in line, like Stacy mentioned in her presentation. So what Bruce is doing right now is going to be this Lux file. Um, this is going to be an application where imagine you're walking into the grocery or you're walking into a retail storefront. And as you're walking in, it says, thanks for coming. Make sure you check out today's XYZ deals. Um, and then when you're leaving, it says, you know, thanks for coming. Here's, you know, hours for the rest of the week. But you need to be able to see right reading information on both sides of the material. So on this, you have right reading information here. And then you've got the same right reading information on the back. But because of the five layer construct, we're doing color, white, black, white, color. When I put my hand behind here, you can see there is no show through of my hand behind the material because of that uh, double hit of white and that block out layer in the middle. Benefit to that is, um, you know, again, getting creative, you can have separate messaging. Um, as I mentioned in that retail space, you, you know, have a message when you're walking into the store and then a different message as you're exiting the store one time through the printer. So perfect registration because it's only going through once. And again, one operator one time through the printer. It's fewer touch points, fewer opportunities for error if you're doing it all in one time. Now, uh, Bruce, if you can help me here, we have this file here just to show how that all actually happens. Did you want to walk us through that, Bruce? Yep. So as you can see, the print was coming out this direction. Uh, carrots traveling this way. Uh, so the first layer is going to be the color, followed by the white layer. Then you have the block out, uh, the second white layer, followed by the second color layer. Uh, so again, front to back, right reading. Again, no show through, anything like that. Uh, and that's all done in the software. It's not something the operator is going to have to um, set up themselves. Um, one nice feature about you know the, the block out is that you can utilize the uh, shape white feature. Uh, so that first photo we showed you uh, was just a flood white. Uh, in this case, um, Stacy had created a separate uh, white layer. Uh, so you can see this was going to be a rounded sign. Uh, so using that white layer, the, the black block out layer is going to follow the white. But again, that gives us the ability to have different shapes. Bruce, can you open up Fiery really quickly just so we can see how it's it's quite literally two clicks to select if it's shape or flood and uh, the layering construct. Yep, so in here we are in Fiery. As you can see, we have our sign. I'm utilizing the spot color for the white ink. If we're to do a bounding box, uh, we would select that. Down here, we have the different printing modes. Uh, you know, your color on white or white on color, that's going to be your first or second surface. Your mixed color with white, that's going to be if you're utilizing white as its own color uh, along with the CMYK. Color white color, color white white color, if you need an extra hit of the white for your um, day night backlit. And then, as you can see, we have selected the color white, black white color. So as an operator, again, you know, um, hiring and maintaining help is challenging. So having all of that built in as default and, you know, a single click is going to minimize how much training or the, the level of experienced operator that is or is not required to run this press, which again, um, you know, efficiency and saving time and money um, obviously is key in this day and age. Yeah, and I think that that really is the message we wanted to get across to everybody is that again, the capabilities of the printers, there's a lot of things they can print on obviously because it's inkjet uh, printing and it's LED, we can get very thin substrates, we can get thicker substrates, the machines have a, a, a lot of capabilities from the print side, but really it's that that versatility um, is step number one, but really the ease of use of that and allowing you to do it with operators that uh, it doesn't take you you know, four years of experience on the machine to get it right, or 
uh, getting a get you know it, it basically the machine does most of the work right so it makes that ease of use uh, of that there and then their productivity features on top of that so how do we do that you know big versatility on applications ease of use so that the operators can can run it these single operators a lot of times or uh, there and then the productivity features so I can get more done with that same amount of resources those are kind of the three keys to making sure the applications you produce can make you money and the materials in this application are what really opens up. So it's the same type of printing where you're doing an image, white, black, white color again, but you can print it on a rigid material. You can print it on a window cling, uh, which is helpful if you're sending out uh, decals or, or promotional materials to stores and employees are responsible for, for decorating the windows. So it's uh, the material adds another facet to uh, the versatility of just this one application. Chris, you're muted. Chris, you're muted. Sorry about that, I was on mute. Um, and you brought up a good point talking about the, uh, you know, the, the thin substrates. Um, anyone who's printed on Lintech, um, you know, window cling knows it's really thin, has a tendency to wrinkle uh, as it goes through the printer. Uh, the 30H comes standard with this redirect bar, which I am utilizing. Uh, that uh, allows the material to ride up and over, uh, gives it some more points of deflection, uh, gives it an S-wrap similar to a, a true roll-to-roll, -roll, even though we're on a hybrid. Uh, that really helps mitigate any of the wrinkling. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, we have the LED lamps that are going to cure the ink at a really low temperature, uh, not going to add a lot of heat to the material uh, that you know would traditionally cause wrinkles. Uh, even in that five layer setting, you know, a lot of time under the lamp, uh, so, you know, still no problems wrinkling uh, anything like that. Uh, there was a question that came in. Um, it said, um, do you need to apply block out on both sides of the material when printing double sided? That was the question. Did, did you get that or should I repeat that? So um, the fact that we can do five layers in line means you don't have to print double sided. You're only going to print on one side of the material. Um, the, the of course, the benefit to that is is that perfect registration um, without having to go back through. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and you talk about ease of use. Um, you, know, you saw we had a, a monitor on the front. Uh, we also have a second monitor on the back. This is fully touchscreen, so anything we can do uh, on the front, we can do on the back, just in a touchscreen form. And then there's also a third set of controls over here on the right. Uh, so if, if much like me, you're a one man show, uh, you know, when, when doing a lot of these demos, uh, it is really easy to have access to, um, you know, getting the printer to function as you need. You're never more than an arm's reach away from, you know, the touch screen on the back, touch screen on the front, uh, or again, this third set of controls over here on the right hand side. And then we do have uh, two foot pedals. Um, so if you're doing rigid material, we have these tables that will attach. Uh, you can have the foot pedal behind the table. So when you're loading sheets, you don't have to run around to touch uh, the monitor. Uh, you can just activate the foot pedal. And Bruce, staying in line with the being a, a you know a solo operator, um, I see you have two different types of materials on there. So you know loading and maintaining um, regular stock is pretty easy, right? You're not having to take everything off and put everything back on as you're changing. Yep. Correct. Um, you know, I can leave this. Uh, it's just a roll of PSA. I have it just sitting on here uh, while I'm running my Lintech. I could back the Lintech off and load the roll of PSA. Uh, changeover would be all of, you know, two minutes. Uh, and then again, switching from the roll to rigid, uh, there's just a little dialog box here in the software. Uh, there's a, a radio button that says either roll or sheet. That's how you're going to tell the software that you're either running a roll or a sheet. And then it's just a matter of uh, attaching the table. Um, you know, for that rigid work. Uh, so again, change over times on, on you know, these hybrid machines are really, you know, as quick as the operator can move to, uh, you know, load a table or, uh, you know, load a roll, which as I found is, you know, no more than two minutes. And do I have to take that heavy bar off with all that material on when I'm putting the table on or, or how does that work? Nope, so you can leave the bar on, leave the material on. I have the table here, so I might as well just demonstrate. Table is on wheels, so it will just wheel up. Attach on like so. As you can see, the roll is still on. 
Uh, normally, if I were doing a, you know, a real switch over, I would have backed this roll off or cut it off. But very, very easy. Um, again, intuitive, uh, very hands off, one man, one woman show. You're not having to spend a lot of time in that make ready. And that's what we, you know, with that variety of applications that Stacy uh, talked about at um, at the beginning, and that's really what we see is a, 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 again the versatility on the equipment, the ability to kind of switch over and do those things in the same with the same um, printer, same ink sets, you know. So I'm doing lots of different options, uh, different substrates, different um, you know printing modes, printing methods, right? But it's the same same printer is is uh, what our customers are seeing as the the profitability side of applications, right? Gives them ability to do more with less at the end of the day. So, well, and and if I can jump on your your coattails on that too, you know, one of the really key benefits and key differentiators for EFI um, is that we can help grow your business, um, you know, faster than some of the competition because we're not just the OEM of the printer. Um, but the software and the ink as well. So when you're talking about what's the best combination of printer and, and ink set, we have the widest portfolio, the broadest portfolio of printers and inks. So um, I like to say we're not a one trick pony. Um, you know, if, if you go with some of the other competitive equipment out there, um, they don't have such a wide portfolio. They don't have um, the, the, the length of, of growth potential that we can offer. Um, so what ends up happening is you end up having to build up a farm of printers instead of trading in and trading up to grow your business. Um, and, you know, the consumables, the maintenance, the touch time, you know, it's, it just at some point becomes too much and inefficient. Um, where again, we have, you know, a dozen different uh, hybrid and roll to roll uh, options in our portfolio already developed. So your business can grow quite quickly, but also efficiently. Um, and then again, you know, as people's business models change, especially over COVID, you know, we saw a lot of customers that were doing trade show graphics and things like that. And of course, all of that came to a screeching halt and they needed to be able to pivot and take their business in a different direction. And through, you know, uh, the applications team and, and people like Stacy coming up with different applications, recommending different materials. Um, but we also over COVID developed a brand new ink set specific uh, 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 focus to Coroplast and non-digital acrylics, which we're running in this uh, 30H today. Um, but of course, with COVID, you know, we had all of these people that needed to change wayfinding and, and, and you know, core plus signs and PPE uh, spatial dividers. A lot of the competitive equipment couldn't adhere to that or, or after printing when it was cut would chip. So we were able to very quickly and efficiently come up with a brand new ink set and then launch it out for our customers that whose businesses had shifted to that type of work. So, um, you know, Partnering with EFI is more than just selling a printer and saying good luck. Um, you know, we have a very vast um, network of, of internal EFIers that can help, um, you know, help your business shift as it needs to um, very efficiently, more efficiently than than some of the competition. Dan, are there any other questions yeah, two, on the line? Two, yeah, two questions came in. Um, first one was around core class. So good, good topic there. And it was about registration on double sided printing if you're using white core class. How does that work? Uh, and for, you talked about the ink, first of all, with core class, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's key. So. Yeah. yeah, Bruce just did a demo actually last week where a uh, customer was doing multiple up um, double sided pre cut core class sheets as well as full width. So, do you want to talk us through what that looks like, Bruce? Yep. So, the, um, you know, the, the double sided, um, you know, it, it's really easy over here. Um, you know, the, the big thing with us is using the same registration corner. Uh, so when we do, you know, one side, we register to the left corner. Uh, what a lot of people do is they'll just, you know, flip the sheet over and use a, the opposite corner to register the sheet. Um, as everyone knows, Coroplast is never cut, you know, perfectly square. So when you register to different corners on the front to back, you're gonna have a little bit of skew uh, just because it's, it's not perfectly square. Uh, so we use that same registration corner, and by doing that, we register to the right side for the front side. And then in the software, there's a again a little dialog box for uh, the origin, uh, which says either left or right. Uh, right is over here. Left is at the carriage home. So on the back side, we would click left side, and there's a separate uh, stopper on the opposite side, so you can register to the the same corner that you registered the front to. Uh, again, getting basically a you know perfect alignment. Uh, even if the sheet isn't perfectly square, uh, that's not going to matter because you are using the uh, the same same, same corner. 
That's a great um, trick. So I would say <laughs> very easy, very efficient. Again, making it easy yeah. on the operators for that double sided. Um, and then for the ink uh, specific to Coroplast, um, insane success with the uh, ProGraphics XA or extended adhesion ink set. Again, it's a standard ink set for the 30H. It is available as an option for several of the other products in the portfolio. Um, but basically the focus for that was um, being able to print to Coroplast and then immediately take it off, bring it to the cutters and being able to cut it without any edge chipping. Um, historically, very challenging, not only for EFI, but for the competition, um, because once you break that ink and material relationship, then the ink tends to flake away. So uh, we were able to develop an ink set that um, behaves very, very nicely um, with that post print process, um, both with cutting, but also with stacking, right? So if you're talking about high volume, you're going to be running sheets through, they're going to be sitting on a pallet, you're going to be stacking them one on top of the other. The XA ink set also has a very hard surface cure, so it, it uh, resists abrasion and marring uh, very well also. So um, really, it is a sort of a, a two headed approach um, and again, it has been insanely successful. Yeah, and uh, the other the other question that came in, thanks for that, is um, is a is a high roll feed system available needed for thick vinyl rolls? So if we have thick vinyl rolls, how how do we handle that? Yeah. So the redirect bar, which Bruce covered on the back, is going to help with some of that, um, but in the portfolio, not available on the 30H, but available on. Um, the 32H and the H series, um, the higher speed, higher volume hybrid printers, we have what we call the elevated unwinder. Um, so basically, it's an ancillary piece of hardware equipment that will attach to the back of the press. You can also have it um, on the take up side on the front of the press. But basically, it allows the material to go straight into the print zone as opposed to coming up and over um, that rear roller. So it tends to help with some of that thicker substrate. It also gives you uh, an increase in the maximum outer diameter and an increase in the uh, weight capacity as well. Perfect. If there's other questions uh, people have, please um, put them in the chat window or uh, let us know. Uh, either Q&A or chat window. I don't see any others right here. Um, give everybody another minute or so to ask. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a uh, two, there's another one I missed. It says, do we have an application manual that describes the different layering methods? So we talked about layering methods. Is there some some documentation or manual to help with uh, with that uh, understanding that? So the white paper is going to cover how you set it up in prepress. Um, so how you do it in Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design, things like that. Um, and then on the printers, how you set that up is a little bit different printer to printer. Um, so covered in training um, would be how you would set it up for the specific printer that you've installed. So for example, over here, you saw Bruce did it in Fiery. Um, on the 32H, on the um, H series, you're going to be able to do it at the printer. Um, you don't have to do it through Fiery. Um, you'll, you'll manage the layering construction um, at the printer side. And on the Q series, it's going to be a little bit more similar to what we do here, where you're going to define the mode um, at the RIP level. And then um, uh, again, you'll print it uh, as defined in Fiery um, on the Q series. So it's going to do the physical setup of the layering is going to depend on the printer, um, but how you uh, create that white layer, how you create that clear, um, Stacy does have that white paper available on that for how you do it in the software. Perfect. Um, let's see, I don't see any other questions. And anything else? I, again, we just hit on a couple applications today. We talked about a lot more. Uh, the, the, what we wanted to get across today, again, is what we see our customers doing, and you probably see out there is the, the variety, the, um, the um, uh, there's just a lot more application possible, right? And, and the, with the printing methods we have, the ink sets we have, we we have a lot of experience. So bring them to us. We're happy to uh, happy to talk through that uh, with anybody that has any specific um, any specific application questions along those lines. Um, a question came in, and, and I'll, I'll plug it in for the next uh, um, next webinar. We're uh, in May. We're doing is on the um, FabReview, um, uh, the new uh, uh, FabReview 340i Plus. Uh, so somebody asked when we're, we're having a demo on that, that'll be in May. If you need something sooner, well, I'm sure we can arrange something. But we're gonna walk through sim similar things with applications and get some um, outside um, 
voices on the on the soft signage market as well. And we'll talk through and show the fab review uh, in our May uh, um, May session. Uh, the date will be coming out shortly. It's the it's the um, third uh, uh, third Wednesday in May, which I think is the twentieth. So that's the day. So it's the uh, I've got it on a, a slide deck. So any, any other questions? May eighteenth. As a matter of fact, that's what somebody was from. So May 18th will be our next session, um, same time, and we'll get invites out to uh, uh, to our partners and any uh, any customers from there. So with that, uh, any I don't see any other questions at hand. Uh, anything else anybody has to offer? Thank you for joining us today. Um, Again, we'll, um, we appreciate uh, appreciate your guys that everybody's participation. Thank you, presenters Stephanie, Bruce, uh, Stacy, for presenting today. Uh, and feel free to ask any follow-on questions either directly to us or to your EFI representative at, uh, after the uh, after the event. With that, I think we'll uh, conclude today's event. We appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much. Take care.